metabolic health or metabolic disease and dysfunction, I should say, is it's more of a spectrum, would you agree? So it's not as though you go from being metabolically healthy to the next moment being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So if someone's listening today and is thinking, well, I live a pretty sedentary lifestyle, but I don't have type 2 diabetes, what you're saying is despite the fact that you haven't been diagnosed with a metabolic condition, if we were to take out the microscope, we took a biopsy of your muscle tissue, we would be be able to identify that there is decay, deterioration, occurring mitochondrial dysfunction, and you are on the path to metabolic disease despite not currently having it. Yes, for, without a doubt. And, 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 and yeah, and uh, exactly. And, and this is why, yeah, it's just uh, sedentary individuals, even though they're healthy now, they're, they're the majority are, are going to encounter cardiometabolic disease in the forms of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, both they're going to have a higher chances of developing cancers. Uh, there's more and more data around cancer. At this point, there's a lot of epidemiological data, more than scientific cellular data, of uh, what being sedentary does to you um, uh, or obese, right? So uh, being obese or being uh, sedentary, uh, it can um, uh, um, uh, increase about 50% chances of many cancers, Right, so that's absolutely astronomical, right? Um, but we're we're still trying to find that that more, right? But yes, we know that um, also Alzheimer's people who are sedentary, uh, they have higher um, um, uh, uh, um, risk for Alzheimer's and and all time disease, you know. And and this is also uh, you, you and I were you were, you sent me yesterday an article right about uh, cardiorespiratory fitness, right? And cardiorespiratory fitness is 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 highly associated to uh, high risk uh, of full cause mortality uh, more than any other disease. Yeah, in that paper that I sent you, there was a bunch of really interesting um, findings. Some that stood out to me were the fact that the higher the subject's cardiorespiratory fitness in that that paper, and that paper was looking at, I believe, over 700,000 US veterans, but the higher their fitness level was all the way up to elite, the lower their risk of death during that follow-up period. Um, But one of the really interesting things that kind of stuck out to me was the authors sort of calculated um, what someone could achieve if they went from low fitness, so essentially the most sedentary people, just to moderate fitness. What would that do to their risk of of death? And, And they found that that would half someone's risk of premature death, just again, just going from low fitness to just moderate, and that that could probably be achieved with 150 minutes of moderate intensity cardiovascular training a week or zone two training. Yeah, absolutely. And, this, and, and I've seen, I'll tell you uh, like uh, an example that I, it's incredibly inspiring and, and it was even hard, it was very hard to believe, but uh, it's true. <laughs> So the, um, um, I tested once in the laboratory an 81-year-old 80 gentleman who was world champion, cycling world champion of uh, the 80 to 85-year-old bracket, which, believe me, it, it exists, right, which is great to see, right? So anyways, I was fascinated because his uh, metabolism, his metabolic efficiency uh, during the test that I do was that of someone in their 30s or 40s, healthy and active, right? I, it was unbelievable. I, 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 I keep that test like a treasure, right? Because it's an absolute treasure to, to, to see those adaptations, right? So anyways, I right away I thought, boy, you, you've been doing sports all your life, right? So, man, you, you chose the right lifestyle, right? And he told me, actually, no. Actually, until I was uh, in the uh, early 50s, uh, I was obese. I was hypertensive. I used to smoke. Uh, I had a very poor lifestyle. I didn't exercise at all. And one day I started to ride and, and bike and, and think about life and things like that. And ever since then. So uh, to your point, what you said, right? This was an individual, in the early 50s, uh, uh, sedentary, very poor, uh, healthy lifestyle. And then 
boom, you know, 30 years later, at 81 years old, his metabolic health was some of that of someone in their 30s whose health wow. is just unbelievable, uh, hard to believe. And, and this is how that, that person, obviously, 81-year-old, that's, that's an example of, of what exercise can do for your longevity, right? That person was not on any medication at 81 years old that and it was a fit slim individual it was hard to believe so but hey this is uh how uh the magic of exercise right is if, if we were able to put exercise in the pill right and take it every day it would be the most sold uh medication in in the history right <laughs> but that's another point that's a a very hopeful promising message story for for people to hear and and i guess speaks to the incredible capacity for the human body to adapt should you provide the right stimulus at any point in time. 